Hey, all you beautiful people out there, and welcome to another John Pendleton rebuttal. If you're new to the channel, thank you so much for stopping by. Why don't you go ahead and subscribe for my fans and subscribers. Welcome back. If you are new, thanks for checking me out and giving me a chance. So, anyway... Um, if you like this kind of content, why don't you go ahead and subscribe to me? I'm sure you won't be disappointed. And why don't you go ahead and check out the other videos I've already uploaded. Speaking of getting on with the video, grab your popcorn and your face palm gear. Get comfortable. And let's go pummel some creationism nonsense. Hello, I'm chemist John Pendleton. And this is our conference number 11, the second of a series of three about dinosaurs. In this uh, one today, we're going to begin out with the movie Jurassic Park. Now, in the movie Jurassic Park, and by the way, Basically, just about any movie you see, uh, made by Hollywood or wherever, the purpose of their movies is not to follow what is history, what is science, what is the truth. They make a movie to make money, okay? And so, just because there isn't a movie uh, like Jurassic Park is that all of it is true. There's some stuff in it that was true. There's also stuff in it that is just makeup in order to make a movie. And, of course, with our first transparency here, the idea was to find a mosquito that had sucked dinosaur blood and became trapped in amber. Amber is that sticky tree resin that we believe washed down with the flood and insects became trapped in there. And then it became petrified or fossilized in that clear crystalline form called amber. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me we get to talk about Jurassic Park. I love Jurassic Park. But seriously, I don't think we're going to be talking about Jurassic Park people, unfortunately. This is just a segue for his bullshit. Honestly, John, you should really think about the way you word things and how you introduce things. Because, you know what, it's not very honest to be saying you're going to be talking about Jurassic Park and talk about it for about two seconds and then go on. Amber is the sticky tree resin you believe washed down in the flood. It, are, what, are, are you, John, are you saying that you think that resin came down in the rain? John, I really hope I'm misinterpreting you uh, and that you're not that stupid, but going on what I've heard on these quote-unquote conferences, I don't have very much confidence. As we all know, fossilization takes a long time. But of course, you have to deny this fact not because you're intellectually honest and are really looking for an answer because this answer has been available for at least 50 years. No, you want to question this because you are a religious ideologue. And the answer that fossilization takes millions of years does not fit in with your 6,000-year young earth creationism, which I might point out is taught nowhere in the Bible. You made it up and inserted it into your book. But to be honest, I'm not that surprised. You see, I used to be a young earther, and I know that you make bullshit up. And try to cram it into your book wherever you can and 
that book really doesn't teach what you say it teaches, and what it does teach, you reject. What is the truth is this next picture. They have found Tyrannosaurus rex bones that are not completely fossilized. They're not completely turned into stone. There's still parts of it that are like fresh bones. Now, first of all, if that's the case, how long ago did that dinosaur die? Millions of years ago? Uh-uh-uh. Not that long ago. Some hundreds or maybe a couple thousand years ago, but not millions of years ago. And look at this. Under a microscope, they have found little red globules. Every test to present indicates we indeed have found real dinosaur blood. That is amazing. And that is devastating to the belief that dinosaurs became extinct 65 billion years ago. They died out, if they died out at all, completely. I decided to ask Dr. Schweitzer about the claims Eric was making about her findings. So I was recently in a Young Earth seminar where your research was used to support claims um, that working blood vessels, fresh blood cells, and intact DNA had been found in dinosaur cells, or dinosaur fossils. Um, is that a fair characterization of your research? <laughs> It's wrong on all counts. It has to do with words. What do they mean by fresh DNA? Basically a T-Rex with a steak in their mouth kind of a thing. <laughs> no. <laughs> it, it depends on how you define it. And that's what I mean. Words are really, really important. Do we have blood cells? No, we do not have blood cells. I don't have the data to support that. We have round red structures that localize to the blood vessel channels. They have the morphological characteristics of blood vessels. They have a chemical makeup similar to what you'd expect blood vessels to have, blood cells to have. So that was Dr. Mary Schweitzer in her own words on Apologia's channel. Link will be in the description. Um, he was actually answering Eric Hovind, but creationists steal these claims from other creationists. So it serves as a good uh keeper as you can clearly hear from her own words they did not find any dinosaur blood and you know just as an aside she gets very upset when young earth creationists use her work to try to prove their bullshit they take what they want what they think supports their claims, ignore the rest, and then to have the very scientist who found this to come on and say that they are liars. That says something, doesn't it? So, no, John, they have not found Tyrannosect blood in Tyrannosaurus bones. That's just a blatant lie and you need to stop lying. Now, we want to go to Texas, uh, south of Dallas-Fort Worth, southwest uh, to a town about 80 miles from there called Glen Rose. Next to Glen Rose is a state uh, park called Dinosaur Valley. In that park they have found over 2,500 dinosaur footprints in Cretaceous stone. Dinosaur footprints on private property they found dinosaur footprints also. And they have located human footprints. You see now just a minute. That's what I said. Fantastic, interesting new information. On private property they found over 400 dinosaur footprints and 80 human footprints. Here's uh, one of the footprints. <clears throat> you can see where the large toe is, the form of the foot of the other toes, and then a ruler alongside to give an idea for scale. Here's another uh, human footprint. You can see the large toe, one, two, three, four small toes. They carefully cut out the whole rock and then cut it diagonally with a sharp saw and found the corresponding lamination indicating it is a true human footprint. John, I don't suppose you know what pareidolia means. Pareidolia is basically when we seek patterns that aren't there. 
which is why some people think there's a pyramid on Mars. But anyway, those quote unquote footprints don't even look like footprints. I know you know this because plenty of people have told you this before. And I even have a video on the subject. It's a live stream. I can't remember what it's called. If I can find it, I will put it in the description so you can see it. Long story short, you want to say this proves that man lived with dinosaurs, which it does not, because those are not even man's footprints. And besides all that, we don't even know they were found in Cretaceous rock, even if they were man's footprints. This is Carl Baugh's shit, and Carl Baugh is less than truthful. And I am so glad that you decided to put some pictures of these quote-unquote footprints on the screen so that my audience can see that these are not human footprints. They don't even look like human footprints, John. So, yeah. Pareidolia with deception. Any questions? Also, I gotta say, I love how you give all this information about, oh, they carefully cut the rock and they found that this is true human footprints, but you didn't cite any studies. Gee, I wonder why that is, John. You know, if there was a study out there, I'm sure you would have given it to us. So please forgive me if I sound less than impressed with your bullshit, John. Try again. And this time, you might actually want to dive into the literature. Um, in fact, you might learn something. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Learning is against your religion. Here we have Cretaceous stone. In the front we see a dinosaur footprint. And just 18 inches away is a human footprint in Cretaceous stone. What does that mean? Men and dinosaurs lived together at the same time, just like the Bible indicates. A couple more, okay. The man on the right here in the blue shirt is pointing to a dinosaur footprint. Actually, it's a trail that goes from top to bottom on the page. The man on the left in the yellow-orange shirt is pointing to a human footprint, a path that goes from left to right on the page. It's only seven and a half inches away from the dinosaur footprint. Indicates men and dinosaurs live together. <laughs> First of all, John, you have not established what stone that is, Cretaceous or otherwise. Second of all, that doesn't even look like a dinosaur footprint. That looks more like a mud puddle. And third, where is this human footprint? I think you need to get a better definition of evidence, John, because this is not evidence. As far as I can tell, it's nothing but a bunch of wishful thinking. So, go back to the drawing board and try again. Um, John, you do understand that the Bible never indicates that man and dinosaurs live together, don't you? Also, the Bible doesn't even indicate that the earth is 6,000 years old. The Bible doesn't say anything about how old Earth is. And I'm just pretending, for sake of argument, that I accept what the Bible says, which I don't even care what the Bible says, because I'm an atheist. Not everybody accepts your book, John. And we're not even talking just atheists here. You've decided what you want to believe, and then you have retroactively placed that interpretation on the Bible. John, 
that is not how things should work. That is not how you should have your beliefs. Not to mention the fact that you should not let any book, I don't care what book it is, dictate your beliefs. You should go where the evidence leads. And the evidence points away from the Bible. Now, if you want to switch to a strictly metaphorical interpretation of the Bible, then maybe we have something to talk about. But don't tell me that you are a biblical literalist when you literally don't believe what the Bible says. I'm not even going to address your second quote-unquote set of footprints because those literally are not footprints. You've decided that you want to believe something so badly that you are willing to manufacture evidence through pareidolia and dishonesty. Also found in that area was this human handprint in Cretaceous stone. Geologists have verified this is Cretaceous stone. And the thing is, it's obvious this is a human handprint in Cretaceous stone. Now, what I think happened was it was beginning to rain for the first time in history at the start of the flood. This person got scared, was running for higher ground, somehow tripped, was falling, put their hand out to break their fall. But since it had rained some, the ground was kind of soft, left that print in the mud and took off. Well, they died in the flood. Which geologist, John, are you talking about Andrew Snelling? Because he's the only geologist that I can think of that would be so dumb as to put his stamp of approval on this bullshit. And let's not forget that Andrew Snelling is an avowed young earth creationist from Answers in Genesis. Unless, of course, he is writing in a secular journal. Which, in that case, no, he is not a young earth creationist. Gee, I wonder why. So now let's talk about this quote-unquote handprint, which is yet another Karl Baugh fake. Now, let's think about this. If it was a real handprint, why doesn't it have footprints around it? And why didn't Karl Baugh leave it in situ? Logic pointed this out in his video, but I would be remiss if I didn't point it out in this video also. How exactly did this handprint get fossilized in stone during the flood when everything was just mud? I mean, think about it. The only way this could happen is if there was some kind of a shield above this handprint that had been put in mud, and then the shield came on top of it, dried it out during the flood, and then the flood put a bunch of mud on top of it. Also, are we just not supposed to notice that he didn't bring any other footprint dinosaur or human together with this it's just a handprint that we're supposed to believe is in cretaceous stone we're just supposed to take his word for it i think not i found two pictures of this supposed handprint at this site and john has one of them and to show you how dishonest he is, he shows you the one that looks more like a handprint. Uh, this one doesn't look as much as a handprint now, does it? To be fair, the other one really doesn't either. I mean, it doesn't really have the anatomical features except five quote-unquote fingers, although I can see where John, with his pareidolia, would get that it's a handprint, but it's really not. Anyway, this is just a 
natural formation. Full disclosure, Glenn Cuban says it could be a natural phenomenon. It could be carved or it could be natural that is enhanced with some kind of an other print like a human or non-human print of some sort that could be in recent rock. Also found in that area is this hammer. Now when the hammer was found, it's inside of Cretaceous stone. All they could see was just the little bit of wood sticking out of the bottom. As they hit the rock above, it fell off and revealed the hammer inside. Now, you'll, if you can notice, there's a little bitty mark on it, the hammer. They, mar they scraped it with a file and indicating that it was steel. They sent this hammer in this state to the laboratory that tested the rocks they brought back from the moon. The laboratory said this was a special kind of steel, that it was iron that had bonded with sulfur and chlorine. They, it's a stainless steel, and they said this kind of steel can only be made today if it's in an atmosphere more than double atmospheric pressure. Isn't that amazing? And, by the way, dinosaurs do not make hammers. Another interesting Okay, so this is called the London Hammer that was found in London, Texas. Another artifact put forth by Carl Baugh. Now, I find it hilarious that creationists can't decide whether it's Cretaceous, Ordovician, or Silurian. Honestly, guys, if you want us to even consider taking your flights of fancy seriously you should consider getting your stories straight first just a few things to point out because i'm not spending too much time on this and then i am moving on first of all they did not document it in situ second of all it wasn't found in quote unquote rock it was found in concretion which is totally different not to mention that Carl Ball himself acknowledges that the hammer was found in a concretion that was not attached to the rock. How about that? We actually get honesty for once. But despite the fact that he just crushed his own argument, he still puts forth this hammer as proof for young earth creationism. Ugh. What kind of drawing could an uh, archaeologist find that would scare him? Well, if he saw drawings of dinosaurs and pterodactyls, it would scare him to death. Why? Because it goes against his belief system. Not for us, we believe men and dinosaurs live together. We have this cave in Europe, the Bernafall Cave, in which you can see by the diagram below, up on the rock, a mammoth is butting heads with a dinosaur. They drew what they'd seen. Interesting thing about this cave, it's closed. You can't get in to see what's in there. Why not? Because they don't want us to know that men and dinosaurs live together because it goes against what they've been teaching us and, and continually saying that men and dinosaurs didn't live together. Hmm. I know there's a phrase for thinking people are out to get you or your ideas when nobody is. Let's see. Let me think. Oh, yeah. It's called a conspiracy theory. Again, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. But a few things that I need to point out. Um, first of all, there is no scientific conspiracy to keep you out of Bernafall Cave. Second of all, scientists do not let their beliefs dictate findings. Real scientists let the evidence lead where it may. 
it is people like you who have to wheedle things into what you want them to say instead of letting them speak for themselves. This is a picture of a painting from Burnafall Cave. And guess where I got it from, John? Yep, that's right. I got it from the internet. So why would things be available on the internet if the scientific community is trying to hide them? Wow, I'm spending more time on this than I'd planned. Point number, eh, I've lost count. This isn't a carving, John. It literally isn't a carving. It is just a natural formation of Burnafall Cave. And the last point I wanted to make is that this painting is in Burnafall Cave. So John doesn't tell you that there are paintings in Burnafall Cave, just that there are carvings in Burnafall Cave. And you know why the pyramids are closed part of the year? I should also point out that even when the pyramids aren't closed, the Egyptian Antiquities Department has limited access for visitors. Now, the reason they've done this is because the condensation of the breath of the visitors has been deteriorating the paintings. That's why Burnafall Caves closed. Where are, dra where are dinosaurs mentioned in, in history? With a different name. They're called dragons. We have, for example, the uh, <clears throat> George uh, of England that in the year 300 killed a dragon. And in England, we have found uh, fossils of the Baryonyx, a type of dinosaur. Amongst the Aborigines of Australia, they have a number of legends and songs that are thousands of years old in which they describe very clearly large animals in the lakes of Australia that would tip over boats and canoes, eat the people. Uh, if there were livestock watering there, they would be eaten. And the description is basically identical with the plesiosaurus, that long neck marine dinosaur. Oh my fucking God. John, you are a complete idiot. This is a legend. A legend. Also, according to this site, the word dragon wasn't even a word in English in the third century. It was not introduced to the English language until the 13th century, and it comes from the French language. Look, John, I know you're not the sharpest knife in the door, but honestly, how can anyone be surprised that there are dinosaurs on the English islands? Dinosaurs were on every continent. I also love how you don't even try making a point. There's a legend of St. George killing a dragon in England in the 3rd century, and there are fossils of Baryonyx in England. Okay, so your point is? Well, thank goodness that's over. You know, debunking all this bullshit is really depressing. I mean, really depressing. I know I chose to do it, but it is depressing. So I'm going to watch some kitten videos and lift my spirits. Please subscribe if you're not subscribed already. If you're already subscribed, please make sure you're still subscribed. YouTube loves to unsubscribe people. Leave a like on the video if you liked it and a comment down below. And I'll talk to you later. Well, that's all for this absolute train wreck of a video. Hope to see you on the next debunk train wreck.